Welcome. Welcome at the session of the business leaders and their theories in times of turbulence. My name is Annette Nijs, and as you may have seen from the program, I'm a former cabinet minister for education, science and culture, but also the president of business schools Netherlands, which operates in China, Africa and Europe. For many years, uh, business schools, also ours, taught management development through years of global growth, wherein disturbances were brief, local and westerns, and many managing theories on how to deal with uncertainty, a constant fast-changing world, are abundant. But how about turbulence, our current turbulence in the world? And with the pandemics, the disrupted global supply chains, the tensions between East and West, what are and should be new management learning and dogmas applicable in Asia? And what are you, panelists, doing yourself differently to address this turbulence? And what are the themes your young managers uh, use? I'm very curious. Our session is 45 minutes and you all have uh, a lot of experience from all over the world. I will invite you uh, one by one to make a brief statement, about two minutes or so. And after that, we can have uh, an open conversation and we will liven it up uh, with some questions of the uh, audience. And I hope the audience will uh, pose us some really challenging uh, questions. But without uh, further ado, Louis Miguel Aboitis, I don't know how you pronounce your name. Maybe you can explain. No, that's right, Aboitis. Yeah. Okay, good. As a renowned businessman in the Philippines, give us your two minutes thoughts. Well, basically, a disruption happens when something that was not anticipated happens. And therefore, it affects the way people act in the future in preparation. In this case, the problem has been a logistical one. So as I mentioned to you earlier, um, what's going to happen in the world is that a lot of people will want their suppliers to be closer to them. Uh, there will be an additional cost for this. But you can see it already happened. Samsung is going to open a factory in Texas. Uh, in Arizona, you've got TSMC building there. Uh, the same thing with Intel to supply locally. And a lot of chip manufacturers are going to require that when they assemble something, they're going to get chips from the same country so that any logistical problems are easily mitigated. And this is just an example of what's happening around the world. And you'll see the world change this way. Unfortunately, it's going to uh, change international trade. We all thought that the best place to manufacture something around the world, that's where you put it, the lowest cost labor, et cetera. You just ship it to yourself. Now people are going to have high inventories and additional costs because of that. And do you think that... Um there, the idea of Apple, huh, like uh, make your product in 12 different countries um, and then uh, assemble it uh, in the best uh, place. Is that a business model of the past? I think uh, companies like Apple are going to assemble their things in two or more places. So if, so if you lose one place, you still have two thirds of your production and you can just shift shipments between them. You're on mute. You're on mute. Crispian Dan Costea, uh, you are in uh, Romania. Uh, you're in the auto industry and a regular presenter here at Horasis. What are your thoughts? So my opinion is that in the last year we faced something very interesting because uh, after a long period in the global market of let's say so, silence and uh, growth, which was defined by the former chairman of the mm -hmm. Fed, Ben Bernanke, as the great moderation. Uh, it, it was a period when the volatility of the uh, business uh, cycles was stopped, and it was a very good environment for business development worldwide. China developed very much. European Union actually uh, accepted a lot of new members and became an important economic center in the world. United States of America developed very much and actually all the world had a very good environment to develop. When uh, this pandemic came, uh, it became like something very surprising to everybody. 
everybody was surprised about what's happening, about what's going to happen. And because of this, uh, all the leaders had to face new uh, uh, ways of thinking and of actioning and taking decision in the, in the last, uh, let's say so, about uh, one year and a half. Uh, what will happen in the future is that uh, we will have to cope with this new environment. And from my point of view, uh, I think that we will have to go further like uh, um, some friends of mine from Arab world define like living in the desert because uh, in the evening you can have the dunes of uh, sand in one position and in the morning all the landscape can be totally, totally changed and you have to continue to go further in the new environment. Uh, from this point of view, I uh, had also to face some very important uh, decisions to take and uh, new actions to, 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 to go uh, about in the period when the pandemic started. I like actually very much the term turbulent because when we are talking about crisis, this is a term which uh, influences people and when people are hearing about crisis, they are became, becoming more panicked. At the beginning of the crisis, as I told you, it was something very strange. Everybody had to face new uh, uh, things of uh, uh, going forward. But uh, from my point of view, the term turbulent uh, defines better the environment because if we are looking to the history of the humanity, there were always crises, there were always uh, uh, things to uh, uh, challenging things to the leaders to go through. And uh, from uh, my point of view, it's better to use the term turbulent instead of crisis because as leaders, we have always to find out the solutions to go through all the difficult periods. And these are better defined with the term turbulent than uh, instead of using the term crisis. And uh, uh, what happened at the beginning of the pandemic, it was that actually here in Romania, uh, I can use one word, panic. Everybody was panicked about what's going to happen. And we had to find out the solutions. And I will tell to you, uh, to you later in the discussion what we were doing in this industry and with our employees to, to go further and to stop people being panicked, uh, gave them optimism and gave them the, the hope of uh, going in the uh, next period of time without being feared of their jobs, of their future, of their family. Okay, let's um, go back to you on how you address this panic uh, later on. Um, turbulence and panic, um, Yves Decat, you're the CEO of Biolingus in Switzerland and you are uh, one of the award-winning Swiss bi biotech companies. And your flagship product, you told me, is a pill for diabetes, which can replace the injections many people with diabetes needs to take uh, every day. So that's quite a, a difference, a pill or an injection. Yves, what are your thoughts? Yeah, first of all, uh, biotech is, is very special uh, industry because, I mean, you're developing a number of, let's say, products that are potentially... Uh, game changers in the industry and very valuable, but they can also fail. And actually, most number of products fail uh, and only a small number of ones succeeds. So aside from, let's say, the external turbulence that we have, like COVID and other pressures, there is sometimes the internal crisis when a product is failing and, and uh, that has a dramatic impact on, on the business. So I want to take a bit a different perspective and really talk about the leadership in such turbulent times. How, how should one change the management style or perspective in such uh, turbulent times, which, which will happen sooner or later? And so I compare this to a captain on a ship. Now, I know the analogy of a captain on a ship uh, is not a good one anymore in general for normal times. I think uh, people talk now about uh, mindfulness, servant leadership, agility, and so on. Uh, but I do believe, and my statement is that actually in turbulent times, the analogy of a captain on a ship is, is still a good one. It's a captain in a stormy world, actually. Uh, so when there is a storm, the captain has to start acting in a different way. Uh, I think one of the first things he has to do is be more present, be visible. Yeah? Um, also, in terms of, uh, in, in, instead of trying to introduce change management and whatever, instead of uh, 
let's say painting the ship, whatever, um, you really have to uh, emphasize that, let's say, the destination is still there. The strategy of the company remains the same, but the short-term direction might change. The focus is on the now. The focus is on survival, yeah? survival until the crisis is over. We have seen that many times, let's say also in COVID, uh, there's many small businesses struggling. And they're, they're really, their goal is to survive. And they sometimes have to do special things and change directions uh, just to survive this crisis and get to uh, the next point. Um, and so um, the, the role of the leader is on one hand to be more present. Yeah, show that you're there, show that you still have confidence in the business, although it's going difficult. And so try to radiate that to, uh, to the people in the company. Um, and another thing is in, in these times, uh, it's important to listen more to the people. I mean, to listen what's happening because they may help let's say, get navigating through these uh, difficult times. And another thing in terms of leadership, uh, in terms of crisis, you will see the real face of people. And, and it might be that some people in, in, uh, are, are coming up like emergent leaders. Some people are just more fit to, let's say, uh, take on leadership roles in, in crisis times. And so as a leader, it's important to also watch the people carefully. And maybe you find new gems in the organization that can take on new leadership roles, not only during the crisis, but also after the crisis. Um, so, so these are my key, let's say, messages at this time about, let's say, management style in, in, in uh, times of uh, turbulence. Thank you, uh, Eve, and you made it very clear uh, for uh, characteristics of this uh, captain in, uh, in a stormy uh, world. Um, and especially your idea of um, focus on the now um, and see what your people are doing uh, because you may find um, different emerging leaders than you originally uh, may have expected. Um, Uwe Michel, you're the uh, executive vice president of uh, Allianz. And we know um, Allianz, uh, all of us, I think, because you're one of those rare companies in the world who are with us for more than 130 years, I think, in the world of insurance and other financial services. services. What are your ideas? Well, thank you very much, Anetia. Thanks to God, I'm not 135 years with Allianz, but well over 25 years, so... Uh, scaring enough. Good morning and uh, a very nice greeting from White Munich because we have snow all over and uh, coming with coming here was uh, great for the couple of winters. Thank you very much in, for the invitation, Annette, and thank you very much for choosing this, this highly interesting theme because it's really it's really driving us and it's really it's a part of we are thinking constantly how to do that. Welcome also to the colleagues and and the audience. Whenever there's a question, let us know. Um, exactly as a big company, we have over 150,000 employees. We are in the middle of a process to change the management. We call that hashtag lead. Yeah. So we, we started this process before the crisis. So we're realizing we're doing more digitally. We are doing more remotely. We have to say goodbye in this big uh, organization from control and command. That's why I was thrilled to hear Eve's thinking. Yeah, this is definitely a, a discussion. So we, we have the feeling we cannot go on as that what we have done for the last 135 years, is that we have one leader in a kind of military style and, and running that through. Then in, we, we are in over 70 countries. I'm responsible for uh, 25 countries in Asia. And uh, how to communicate with them? How to, and this is the really challenge, how to communicate with them uh, if you are not there. Uh, I like this picture with the captain extremely well. And when, when I remember my former times when I was CEO, I, um, I, I discovered military crews and earthquakes somewhere in Indonesia. So then you are there and then you have to lead. And then you can easily lead because you're standing there and you do something. It's completely different now. I'm sitting here in, I'm sitting here in Munich. I have people in China whom I haven't seen for two years. I'm um, employing managers who, whom I have not seen. I have no human touch with them. So what do we do? 
Hmm? What do we do? Of course, we do that, what everybody is doing. I'm doing teams, I'm sitting together with you, and I'm really enjoying it. It's much more easier for me now to have interaction with people because I do not have to travel. That's all fantastic, but I do not have the human touch point. I do not have the human touch, but I cannot sit together with a, with a cup of tea or, or, or with, with a glass of wine in the evening and get out. What is your problem? What is the problem with the company? Is there something that I can help? Uh, is that what you're doing, fitting to that, what we here in, in the head office want? Um, how I'm doing that? No, I have no, I have no solution. I would cry it out. Huh? I would cry it out if I have a solution. But, but what we're doing is um, being present, Eve. Yeah? That's, I really like that, being present. But bring present as much as you can. I'm, I'm, I'm starting traditionally writing letters. It's starting having a lot of telephone calls. My, my, my people, they get a bit annoyed, I guess, even in the morning if I'm calling them, what will you do today? Is there anything ongoing? I have introduced and interestingly easy things. Sometimes they will say, oh gosh, is this, is this old fashioned? I have introduced regular meetings with my closest people one a day, with those who are far away from me, sure fixes, just not to get them, just not to let them walk away. And with that, I'm also very happy, very happy to end, because in my management style, I would be very happy if we can come back to a human interaction. And honestly, the same would go to see you and the, all the Holasis friends again in Japan next year, respectively, in beautiful Portugal. Thank you very much. And let it back to you. Thanks for the opportunity to talk. Yes, it is indeed a very different uh, interaction, uh, as we all uh, all know. Um, so we, we can uh, maybe talk a little bit later as to how you can reach the human um, interaction um, in, in the online uh, world. Um, Long, Long Nguyen, you're the director of the Department of Science and Technology of um, a province in Vietnam, uh, Bing Duong. Um, how do you see this managing in turbulent times? Yes, uh, firstly, I totally share with all the ideas uh, people talk uh, right now. Um, I also have uh, my uh, own opinion a little bit uh, strange that I believe that the fourth uh, industrial revolution and the emergence of Asia before COVID already created a breakthrough in management theory, that is for sure. Uh, but uh, after COVID, uh, some fields will develop uh, faster, for sure, like uh, people already mentioned, like digital technology, biotech, uh, healthcare, etc. Or it's a moment people think more about human interaction. It's not only uh, distance, but you need also the affection, the sentiment, the touching, between people, uh, but uh, I think that uh, they, uh, are after COVID, for sure that they accelerate some change in management theories, but in fact, uh, they still keep uh, the same direction of the fourth industrial revolution and the emergence of Asia before COVID. So, it, so it's the same direction, just accelerate in some uh, domains is what I believe. Okay, and so basically you're, you're saying the world has been changing and will be changing uh, uh, again. Um, I'm a little bit curious, um, I don't know about you, how in Romania you address this uh, panic? You're, you're on mute. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you about my experience because at the... Uh, beginning of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic here in Europe, uh, we decided to discuss more with the people. Uh, at least uh, uh, we tried to split them in small groups, but uh, make with uh, all the employees a direct discussion and to make them feel not so panicked because it was really incredible what happened here. I can tell you at one moment, one of our employees, which was extremely scared, just asked us, uh, are we all going to die uh, because of this pandemic? And I told him, no, 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 it's not about this. So in the life, there are two types of uh, managers, those which are seeking to go back in the predictable times, like I told you that we had before. 
and those which are embracing the new reality and are going to make all the things possible to go in the direction that they want because we cannot change all the wave but we cannot control like a captain uh, the crew the the vessel and uh, we can go in a direction that we want because we wanted to eliminate the panic from our people i decided to discuss with four types of different individuals different professions to make myself better understand how to communicate how to communicate with our people communicate first directly if possible and of course online if not possible and in these circumstances first of the thing that i did i called one of my friends which is the manager and he's a doctor of the pulmonologist hospital and i discussed with him i told him okay the covid is a medical problem it's about the lungs especially and please let me understand what's going to happen and uh, which are the most important things that we can do to our teams so this is the first discussion that i had with the doctor the second discussion because i was interested in interacting with our people was with a uh, 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 university teacher which is teaching psychology why psychology because interacting with the people i was interested in sending them mass information that can all of them influence in a positive way and i considered that i had to discuss for this purpose with a psychologist and it was very good that i did this third here in romania one of the institutions which uh, uh, is uh, provided by the people with the highest trust is the church and in these circumstances i decided to discuss with a priest and to ask the priest how i can make my team be more optimistic in this turbulent times and it was very important because the people you know uh, are searching for sometimes that kind of uh, 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 spiritual uh, silence and safety in this kind of turbulent times and of course after discussing with all these three different categories of persons i decided to discuss with one more uh, it's a little bit strange but i discussed with an actor with a comedy actor and i asked him how can i be more involved in connecting myself in communicating with my team and telling to my employees beautiful stories that can help them feel optimistic and just follow us when we take all kind of decisions so these were the four categories of people that we discussed that were totally out of our businesses and uh, different professions but uh, i can tell you it was very interesting uh, i consider now that it was a very good approach and i can tell you that even during the lockdown we were working each day we were not uh, stopping the activity for one day of course some of our colleagues were working remotely but uh, uh, as a business we continued in each day to go forward and uh, i appreciate that we were going very very well during the last one and a half year i think that four discussions had a lot um who when you hear this uh, because you are in a very large uh, company um do you think what do you think would this be useful for you too Mm, thank you very much. Yeah, just uh, I'm, I'm thinking I've seen. I just applauded. Um, uh, it's really interesting to talk to these four different people. Hmm? Very, very, very interesting to do so. Um, in a big company, um, you have a couple of these four persons besides the priest and the actor in the overall system. Yeah, so you have uh, you have an intensive medical service, especially as an insurance company, where they're working intensively on the on on what to do and um, how to do precautions. In in the system, what what's a bit missing? What was a bit missing? This I found interesting. This is this is the priest, yeah. This is the the the, the religious part, and this is this is giving people strength and hope. And uh, let me use that word, which is more which is business school like, and that like it's the resilience, yeah. It's really really increasing resilience, and uh, maybe that was the part. And when you are talking, I think this is something what we. What, what what we as business leaders, especially in big organizations, have to do more, giving the people the trust it will go on. I'm sure, even in 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 a, in a, in, a, in a smaller company, you have to do that. Yeah, it, it comes together with the captain. Yeah, the captain is the one who gives trust. The captain gives the one who gives strength. 
the captain who gives them the feeling, yes, this this we, we can do, we can do together. And uh, I will bring you into there. That's interesting. I think that aspect is in big companies, in big stock companies, not that much, uh, not that much introduced as it is in the smaller ones. And I think it's a very, very interesting thing. Let me think on that, and let me think um, how, how I can use, how I can do that even in a remotely, even even in a remotely way, because we are far away of hanging, of having, um, of having beaten the pandemic. It will go on. For the next year, maybe, maybe, maybe even, maybe even longer. So, thank you very much for that thinking. And I want to come back to the very clear characteristics uh, Eve uh, told us. Um, Eve, I think we all love your idea of the captain uh, in in stormy um, uh, in a stormy world. Um, Louis Miguel, can I ask you? Did you see in um, you, in these turbulent times, emerging leaders uh, coming up, which you did not expect, uh, like uh, Eves uh, was uh, mentioning? Well, I can speak of one case here. Um, there is a leader of a business association. Uh, you know, when the crisis hit, a lot of the different government um, institutions don't have experience in dealing with this crisis. And so they were either slow to react or didn't, weren't sure what to do, and so did nothing. So the, the business association here in the Philippines um, essentially did a public drive, talk to them to convince them what to do next. And so um, when they saw the government was not ordering vaccines because the government's procurement rules required delivery before payment, whereas the vaccine companies required deposit before even manufacturing. The, uh, the business associations started uh, and paid the uh, private manufacturers and basically said, I'll buy one vaccine for me and give the second one to the government and we'll pay the money up front. And so that was a solution to buy at least a portion of the vaccines quickly. So that's a good example of how leadership can step in, particularly when the government is, um, uh, their hands are tied because of their own rules. Thank you. That's, that's very uh, interesting um, to, to hear. Um, and you were saying to us, um, I think that the um, supply chain will be more local, regional, and uh, you've quoted uh, Samsung, for example, as one of the champions. I was wondering, um, uh, Long, do you see um, a similar uh, development and do you see already <coughs> something of that in Vietnam? Um, yes. Uh, firstly, uh, I would like to share some ideas with uh, uh, Michel, Michel when, uh, when you talk uh, about the, the long term uh, maybe it's the same strategy, but for short term, we have uh, to really adapt and uh, think more about how to survive and work well. So it is same in uh, in Vietnam. Uh, for the long term, we still keep uh, the same direction, uh, but for the short term, uh, like Philippines and other country, uh, Luis already mentioned, we also try to find a solution. And, but uh, very fortunately in Vietnam, uh, people used to have a uh, uh, turbulent time you know we uh, we um, we are emerging country and uh, people try to really uh, survive well during the covid even the government and um, for uh, i think that uh, what i already mentioned uh, in vietnam people talk a lot about the fourth uh, industrial revolution before before covid in uh, 2016, they talk a lot uh, about that. So we are trying to uh, adapt with the new technology like digital technology, uh, online, etc. But it doesn't work very well, you know, because people don't really have experience with that. So people, but during COVID, everything changed. Uh, my parents, for example, they are about uh, 70 year old. And they said that uh, for them, it's impossible to think about e-commerce, uh, how they can use the smartphone with uh, many different platform, you know, e-commerce platform, 
uh, eBay or Amazon for them is impossible. So they still use a very classical way, go to market, buy something and go back. And during COVID time, uh, no one can help no one because it's a uh, lockdown. So, uh, so they phoned me and asked me how to use it. So I show them just some uh, basic technique uh, to do it. And now even the COVID in Vietnam is almost uh, calm and uh, we are in a no new normal already. So people can go to market, but for them, they don't want to go market anymore. They use uh, the smartphone and they say uh, that it's cheaper and they even know what kind of platform they prefer and Amazon is better than eBay in this point. And they even advise me to do it uh, <laughs> to be uh, more comfortable, you know, so, so it's really impacts strongly in the society yeah. that way. So it's, it's really funny. So I, I, I believe uh, the same with other people already talk here. Yeah. Yes, I, I think so. And I think a lot of um, um, grandparents uh, have had to learn uh, to talk uh, with their family and, and the young ones, especially uh, uh, online. There's actually a question from uh, Tim Nickel, and um, he asks, what changes in your leadership approach brought about by COVID will you retain? So what did you do differently whilst COVID and what do you think, hey, that is a good thing for me to keep on doing? Who wants to say a few words about that? I mean, I, yeah. I can say something. Um, basically, before COVID happened, uh, we were, you know, Manila is full of traffic and we were thinking of having more flexible um, arrangements for our people to work, meaning that uh, we were thinking of putting satellite offices closer where they live so their commute would be shorter. Uh, our office, instead of having one big central office, to have four different offices around the city. Uh, we were thinking of outsourcing our accounting to a place with low real estate cost, very close to where people live. But we never, we, we were studying it. And we never actually executed it. Well, now COVID has hit. And uh, I assure you that we are not even studying it. We're going to execute it already. So our leadership style or the requirements of work will be more flexible. And Yves, um, how about you? So, yeah, I think what I hear a bit in the discussion up to now, there, there is a kind of paradox. Yeah? In, in, terms, in turbulent times, the leader has to be more present, has to be more visible uh, than ever. Uh, but on the other hand, we see the world is getting more virtual. And with COVID, you can't travel anymore. And, and so, like, you need to be more present, but it's getting more and more difficult to be present or to, to be visible. So how do you solve that? And I think it comes back to... Um, to, to something um, that was said before, the creating faith or confidence is more important than ever. Uh, if you have, if you are in the situation of, let's say, uh, being more virtual and still creating uh, hope, actually, and visibility. I think the what I did more, we are a small company, but we also operate, let's say, in different continents. I emphasize really the mission we are in, so that people really believe in the mission you are in and, and with, their, with their hearts and hands and their emotions, believe in what you do. Yeah? And so then, then you, uh, you really motivate them and you get them on board and get them through the difficulties. I think that is more important than ever. Yeah? So emphasizing the vision, stimulating the hope and the belief in what you do. It's interesting. Um, like I said, I'm a president of the Business School Netherlands and there have been many companies who asked us to help with uh, reviewing, uh, especially online with the whole team, uh, the mission and, and vision statement. So I think a lot of companies have done that. Um, oh, uh, Michelle, I, I saw you also wanted to... Uh, Mute. Okay, yes, I'm, thank you, thank you, all working well, all working well. Yeah, I, com I completely, I completely agree with that. Um, I think 
and looking around for people who traveled over 20 years around the world and around the countries, I think what we will keep out of this pandemic is uh, working more remotely and working more, working more virtually. And our people wants to work from home. It's not that uh, it's not that uh, we are offering them and it's more cheaper and more permanent. We will not get all the people back in our big offices. This is very, very clear for us. So we have to work on that. How can we make it happen that they can work from home where it's more convenient? And how can we have spaces where they can meet and work together? So it will be a hybrid model. And with a hybrid model, of course, sooner or later it will come. How can we make sure that it's a chess model? How can we make sure it's a fair model? Not to have people who are working day and night, hmm? which would be, which they kill themselves and others are, are, are spending their time on the golf course. So how can we, and that's where the business schools, this is where the, the academic will come in. How can we, how can we bring um, a more free, a liberal, a more relaxed model in where we have people who work that what will work decently with that, what they are paid for. And I think that's, uh, that will definitely be the art for the next five years. And really looking forward to where the solutions will come from. Thank you. Anna. Is Maybe there I, someone, yeah, do you have a solution for that, uh, Long? Uh, yes, I just uh, listened to the, the talk of uh, Michelle. is very, very nice. Uh, before joining the government, I was a deputy CEO of Becamex Corporation. So uh, uh, it's uh, one of the largest company in Vietnam for industrial parks. So I saw that they make a lot of uh, digitalization. So before COVID, they tried to do it, but not really done well. But after, uh, but during the COVID, they pushed it very quick. And now the whole company is uh, digitalization. Uh, very nice. Uh, the, the problem is very clear, uh, very close to the ideas of Michel. Uh, at the beginning, we think that we can work by distance very well. Uh, of course, it's more efficient in some situation, but uh, after like three months of using this method, we still uh, we start to think, oh, oh, uh, really, we need to meet. You know, we need the the place to sit together. We need to uh, interaction between people, and that is uh, the question we are posing right now in in Vietnam, in many in many companies and and uh, and uh, organizations. And I think in management theories, even the technology is growth. The idea is we can work by distance, but maybe in other in, in other side, uh, we, we, we will have a more growth in a theory of uh, interaction between people in management, the, in leadership, the, the connection become more important, not only technology connection, but also human connection. And it will be difficult, I think, to uh, to find a, a balance uh, in that. Crispian, then, uh, go ahead. I will tell you only one thing, which is I consider very important. Uh, what I was learning during this um, turbulent time, it, uh, it's the importance of listening, of listening to, to the team, of listening to the customers, of listening to the suppliers. And what we will continue to keep in our daily uh, business, in our daily schedule in the future, is the uh, connection with all these stakeholders, uh, not only through personal meetings like we used to have before the pandemic, and I'm really missing going uh, in business trips everywhere in the world, but on a daily basis to have meetings with them on this kind of platforms, like it's the around the world, because it really helps to better understand ourselves, not only through the emails, which are sometimes too official, but through direct uh, discussion. And when it will be possible to personally meet, the, the meeting, I think, will be even more uh, uh, fruitful than there were before because you already know yourself from online environment and we will keep on a daily basis this kind of interaction with all these partners that uh, that we have um i see we have um, a few more uh, minutes and i would like to give you uh, all the floor uh, again uh, to give us uh, your thoughts um, to see what we should not forget post-COVID. Um, who wants to go first? If no one volunteers, um, Yves, may I ask you to... Oh, I see um, Luis. Luis, go ahead. Yes, I think we must uh, all know that things are going to go back to normal but the normal is going to change now that 
everybody is going to think of a scenario like this, or even though this happened once every 100 years, it will be fresh in our minds. And so everybody is going to plan for crisis like this in the near future. They're going to change their supply chains. They're going to change how they do business. And the employees' expectations are going to be different also. Thank you. Um, Uwe, Uwe Michel. Well, the world is not for granted and many, many new things will come and we have to stay flexible to act with that and resilience. I like this resilience very much. Eve. Yeah, I would say what I learned is although uh, communication is getting more and more difficult and virtual, it is even more important now to communicate more, better uh, and also more emotional, Yeah, uh, instilling hope and faith in the people. Go ahead. Okay, I uh, just uh, would like to say as a concluding remarks that uh, the leaders will have to be uh, a model in the future, not only from the communication point of view, which is very important in turbulent times, but also from the fact that they will they will have to to represent a standard uh, to everybody, including the uh, government uh, sector, where there were a lot of uncertainties in taking decisions during the pandemic times. I think everywhere in the world. Uh, in the second uh, uh, line of my idea, the uh, courage uh, and the calm that the leaders have to present to everybody is very important because the leaders must uh, face the realities and they have to take decisions and not only uh, accept uh, where the waves are taking us, but also to try to give a direction to where we want to be and where we want to go and where we want to arrive. Thank you very much. And I must say, um, I thought this was a very interesting uh, panel. And to hear that someone uh, of you in Romania uh, engaged uh, a priest and an actor, uh, in addition to a doctor and a psychologist, to, to understand better um, what to do uh, in, the, in the company. And um, I'm glad to hear that that gave hope to the people who are working uh, uh, with you. And, and Eve, thank you for your uh, new, uh, very clear uh, leadership traits, um, who uh, captains in this uh, really turbulent uh, and stormy world uh, need to have. And we didn't um, talk a lot uh, about uh, focus on the now, but uh, people I think did agree with you eh, on, on listening to the people um, and having a look at new energy and emerging leaders and be, be visible and, and present. I think, um, Uwe Michel, your human interaction focus uh, will be a puzzle for the years to come. Uh, how do we combine hybrid and, and working uh, at home? And I'm interested uh, to see, um, uh, Luis, in what uh, extent we will have this real regional and maybe national uh, supply chains and conditions from companies to come to a country uh, in order to make sure they secure their uh, supply chain. And Long, I thought it was very great of you to uh, also show us the story of your parents who are much more digital aware now uh, than, uh, than before. So I'd like to thank you. I'd like to uh, thank Tim for his questions. And I wish you um, a very good continuation of the Asia Horasis meeting. Bye for now.